All right, folks, so welcome back. Today, I'm just gonna talk about editing open educational resources in LibreText with a focus on a single chapter and how do you pull content into that chapter, remix it, edit it, make sure it's the way you want it, create placeholders and the like. So that's all we're gonna do in this video. Remember the OER process from start to finish, you create that comprehensive table of contents. And then from that you OER map, meaning every single one of those chapters, you put links out to whatever OERs you're going to use. So you have that comprehensive OER map ready to go. We went over a little bit of remixing in my last video, things like how to create a brand new book, how to get started in building your table of contents into your remixer, this one I'm gonna focus more on editing a very specific chapter, how to pull content in for that chapter and how to customize it. And then in my next video, I will talk about publishing an LMS integration. So again, this is focused on just LibreText. I love LibreText. It was created by a UC Davis faculty because he was frustrated with the cost of books in his chemistry class. So I definitely feel like this entire software, it is built for faculty for you to better help and serve your students. We are gonna be working in the Libreverse, specifically always looking for the conductor page. If you ever feel like you're getting lost, go back and find that rocket and go back to the rocket and go from there. So things I'm gonna to cover today, specifically focused on chapter editing. I'm gonna talk about the conductor project page possibilities, editing, something called forking, which is how you actually edit other people's content with proper licensing and attribution. I'm gonna talk about saving and when in doubt you save some more. I'm gonna talk about uploading pictures with alt text, attributions and why LibreText Remixer does the heavy lifting of attributions for you and why it's really worth it to pull in from the Remixer rather than just copy and paste into blank pages because they pull in all that attribution for you. So we're gonna go ahead and get started now. On the right hand side here, this is an example of a table of contents that I have pulled. This is a start to finish. You've got the book title, every single chapter, and you'll notice every single chapter beginning starts with introduction and chapter topics or objectives and ends with end of chapter summary, key takeaways. And in the middle, I have concepts, definitions, and case studies. If you build out your chapters to be uniform, even if you're pulling from multiple different sources, it creates that consistency for your user and will help with usability of your content. Now I have only built out just chapter two as an OER map for you folks to see. I found an OER that I feel like works for the introduction. So I'm gonna use that to start. And then for the end of chapter summary, I'm gonna put a placeholder because I'm gonna author that myself as an example. And then I found OER text in the middle that I'm going to pull in. And I'm gonna show you why I did not hyperlink specific words and I put in the entire URL here because this basically shows you the entire pathway you have to take, easy, ready to go. So to get started, go to libretext.org and you're gonna log in. Now I've already done this today, so I'm already logged in. And from here, you're in the Libreverse. You can always scroll down. These are all the libraries right here. You could scroll and browse if you still need to browse some more and find things for your OER map. But if we already have our OER map, we're gonna to go to the conductor page. Now we have many projects here. This is where you have all your projects listed. This is the one I used as the example before. This is your project page where you have a lot of really cool things you can do. It acts as a project management NAT chart. And within this, there's a couple of really great options. If you want to add team members, you're gonna click manage team, search for the teams here. If you're using a specific uh, Gmail account, you're gonna make sure you click on include outside Gmails if you're using a school account, you're going to have to do the same thing if your person you're searching for doesn't have the same email as you. And you can add them right here. And they will be able to have access to this page. You can also go to edit properties. Here is where your actual title of your project is. The status right now is open and in progress. We are currently constructing it. And it is currently private, meaning only I have access to view it and anyone who is part of my team would have access to view it. If I click public with conductor, that means anyone who's a verified instructor who has access to conductor would be able to see it. I recommend putting in a project description. If you have one from your CID or your core, you could throw that in. If you have a CID number, I would throw that in. Any other elements you can put in here will help you have back end metadata. 
as well as if you have a thumbnail that you wanna use as an image for your entire book, I put that in here. If you scroll down, there's a whole bunch of other fields that you can feel in. And then down here at the bottom is the danger zone. If you're like, I just wanna delete this whole book and start over, this is where you would delete the project. Once you have all the fields the way you like it, hit save changes. So that is in edit properties. Manage team is where you can add people to help edit your book. Timeline is where you can add in very specific tasks. If you have multiple people working on this, I have some projects that we're working on with the ASCCC OARI that have multiple authors from different institutions. So we have threads where we're talking about specifically where we are at to make sure we're keeping our team members up to date. You can do accessibility here, peer review if you wanna ask for peer review later on. You can add in tasks down here if you want. There's all sorts of really cool elements related to this. This is kind of like your massive project management page. Under timeline, if you go to this page here at the construction roadmap, this is where long-term you're gonna eventually go to publishing. Like right now we're in editing, that's where we are right now. And anything that you put in a timeline would show up down here. So again, this just kind of acts as a really lovely overview of your entire project. Now, once you're here, this is where you'd actually go to the book to edit it. But first we're gonna go to the Remixer tool. So you're gonna go to more tools and you're gonna go to OER Remixer. And if you have a big enough screen, I recommend that you have on one side your OER map ready to go. And on the other side, you have the Remixer tool. Now, remember the first time you go to log into your Remixer tool, it's almost always gonna tell you you don't have access. It's gonna turn red down here at the bottom and say, you don't have access to edit this page. Now mine does, cause I'm already logged in, but if it turns red, it's very normal. It just means that you're in separate software for the LibreText Humanities Remixer tool and it wants you to re-sign in. So if it does that, you just click right here, sign in again, go back to the conductor page, back to more tools and relaunch the Remixer tool. When it comes up and it's got a green and orange here in the corner, that means you have access to actually edit. And on the right-hand side here, this is our actual book. On the left-hand side is all of the elements that we can pull from in LibreText. We're currently in the Humanities Library and these are their three big categories. So for instance, let's talk about editing chapter two. Now our chapter two, as an example here, is titled Critical Thinking. So I've titled it Critical Thinking. You can just double click on it and that's how you can change the title or you can click on it and hit the editing option to change the title. Now we have a total of four sections. If I was gonna author all of these from scratch, I could just hit the plus button four times and have four blank pages that then I could just add an introduction, key concepts, examples of case studies, and then end of chapter summary if I'm just doing that. But because I am actually going to pull in content from other places and not have to edit it myself, I only need one placeholder, the placeholder for end of chapter summary and takeaway because I don't have anything for that and I'm gonna have to author that from scratch. So I would delete the other ones because I don't need them. And then the one that I wanna create a placeholder for is the end of chapter summary. So just double click and hit end of chapter summary end of chapter summary, okay? And hit save edits. Now for the other ones, I just need to find them and pull them in because they're already out in the Libreverse somewhere already. So one of the reasons I don't actually hyperlink the word, but I put this entire URL in here is it gives you the entire pathway on where to find this, this specific section. So this is in the humanities library. So we're in humanities. You look right here, it's under bookshelves. So you click on the plus sign next to bookshelves. This is in the research and information literacy section. So you hit the research and information literacy section. This is in critical thinking academic research and it gives the author. And this is specifically what is critical thinking. So it's in this first chapter and I only want 1.1, what is critical thinking? So I can just click and drag this right into this chapter. It automatically changed it from being 1.1 to being R2.1 or 2.2. Now I want it to be at the beginning of the chapter right? And I want, we're just going to pull this down because it wants to be out of order. There we go. But I want it to be titled introduction because I want them all to be the same, right? I want all my chapters to be the same intro and objectives. It, maybe that's going to be the title of every single one of my introductions and I hit save edits. So even though I've pulled in this content, I've changed the title it automatically changed the numbering for me and it automatically had it listed here. If you're like, Rachel, I can't see that small little URL. Where are you finding that? You can also link out to it. And this is again, having the table of contents with the OER map will make this process so much more expedited than just trying to browse around. 
So we've pulled this in. This is where we can see it up here in the light blue. This is that exact same pathway right here. Bookshelves, it shows what book it is. It shows the section, and this is where we actually found it. So we were able to pull that in. So that's our introduction. So then next we have definitions. So say we wanna to go to the definitions. This one is in a different library. So we were in the humanities libraries before right here. This one is in the social sciences library. So I've, I get confused all the time still to this day. So up here, you're in the humanities library. You need to make sure you go to the social sciences library. And then we are looking under bookshelves this time. And we're looking under communication studies. So we're gonna go to communication studies. We're gonna go to argument and debate. Once it loads, we're gonna go to argument and debate. And then we're gonna go to validity or truth, argument or debate, argument and debate. Arguing musical critical thinking right here with the author, we've got the author right here. And then we're gonna to go to validity or truth. And we're going to critical thinking defined, which is section 8.9 right here. And we want that to go right here and see it automatically change the number from being 8.9 to 2.2. If I wanted to change this to say definitions first, so I could double click it, change the title and all that content that's within it is already here. All right, so now we have that one done. We go back here, say I also want concepts. Say, I thought this was a great definition, but I wanted the concept as it was explained somewhere else. So I wanna to go to this one. This is again in the humanities. So we go back to the humanities. And this one is in a campus bookshelf. So this one is not in regular bookshelves. It's in a campus bookshelf. This was created by our college, Kalinga College. And say, I wanna go down to Kalinga College right here. I wanna find our critical thinking book right here. And I wanna to go to basics of critical thinking section 1.2, and I say I only want 1.2.1, common barriers to critical thinking expanded. So I click here and I put that in here because say I liked the case studies that were done down here. Now, say you get to here and you're like, you know what, actually though, I think I also may like looking under forms of critical thinking. Maybe I also like that these are, are, are you know, definitions of analytical and creative and convergent and divergent, but I wanna look at them. Right here, while you're here, you can do some browsing. My warning to you is you don't want to do too much browsing and you also don't want to over aggregate. If you're like, I think I like them all, I'll just pull them all in and decide later. That's going to create a mountain of work for yourself that no one but you as a subject expert is going to be able to chip away at. I've seen faculty who basically pull in 20 puzzles, dump it on the floor and then try to say, I'm going to remove all of the redundancies and duplications at a later date and projects plateau. I strongly recommend picking one or two or going to just sections like this where you're not picking entire chapters, you're just picking sections and pull it in. But say you're like, I think I might like this and this isn't covered in the other one. Click this link right here and it'll actually let you go and like evaluate it. And you can say, actually, yeah, this one specifically is talking about analytical thinking. I like that it's talking about it. It isn't redundant content. I want to add this in. So say you wanna add this in, you can just click and drag. So you wanna add all three of these in because you like them, okay? This is a way that you can add things in, you get it the way you want it, and you go, okay. So you go back to your documentation. Say we also wanted this one though. This is in the same book, but it's a different chapter. But I found that, you know, the case studies in this, I really like the case studies. So I want this to be my case studies. So this is in chapter seven, and it is 7.2. So we go right here, applying critical thinking, and this is gonna be before the end, application. But say I wanna call it something different. Say I wanna call it case studies because I'm gonna, again, make all of my um, chapters uniform. Okay, so say I wanna do case studies. All right, applying critical thinking and hit save. So now we have it all right here, ready to go, and we hit save to server. Once you've done this, you have not actually saved it yet. You have to hit save to server a second time. What this has done is it's pulled in all of the content already from your OER map. So you took all of this stuff right here, you pulled it in. The reason that this really helps when you pull it directly from the Remixer tool, it pulls in all the attributions for you. It pulls in all the accessibility for you, all of the alt text, all of the files, everything is already pre-built in there for you. So you don't have to worry about going back and doing accessibility quite as, as thoroughly because it's already been done for you. So. 
right here. We could go back and revise it if we want to go back and revise it some more. But I recommend just doing chapter at a time, especially if you're working with the group. You have to be careful with the remixer. If you have like five different faculty working on different chapters, you don't want to be remixing entire chapters because that could mess everybody up. So be very careful. And I recommend just doing chapter at a time. So now we've pulled in all the content from our OER map and we need to actually edit. So we were in chapter two, which we called critical thinking. And within chapter two, these are all the elements. Every chapter box is going to basically be an index page of everything that you've pulled in there. If you want a specific image or icon, you just push down the page settings right here. And this is where you could add in a file of an image for your specific chapter. Now we have everything in here. Remember our introduction, we pulled it in from somewhere else, but say I know for a fact that I want very clear learning objectives and I don't see that on this page. Now we pulled this from the source already, but we need to be able to edit it. So one of the problems is if you click edit right now, it's gonna say you don't have access to edit this because we haven't forked it yet. What that means is that means that this content is still live. Whoever originally created this content, if they edit it, it will edit it on our end. And so it is still basically a mirror of their work, but we wanna be able to edit this. So there's a couple of ways to do this. The easiest way I found right next to the title, there's this little fork, it almost looks like a merge symbol. Click on that and it's gonna say, do you wanna fork this page? You hit okay. And then a second time it's gonna ask you, when we do this, it's gonna freeze the content. Are you sure you wanna do this? And about half the time this doesn't work and you have to click it like three or four times. This happens with free software sometimes, you just have to click it a couple times. So now you'll notice the fork option went away. So now if we hit edit in the dark gray option, ta-da, we have access to edit this page now. We could delete it, we could edit it, say I like this first part, but I wanna add in some learning objectives right here. I go to boxes, I go to objectives. Personally, I'm a three to five objective person. So say I wanna add in those objectives, say I wanna add in some other content down here. Okay, but what's cool about this, it automatically brought in my attributions. The content, I don't have to work from scratch. I add and edit it the way I want it, and then I can hit save. And now it has been saved. It still shows the original authors on it. We can have us added as an author if we feel like we did a lot to it to really change it. We've added in what we want, and now we've edited this page. It's ours to edit, but it is still having all the attributions and everything that we want in it ready to go. So that is how you fork and edit a page. Now let's also talk about the placeholder page. So remember in our last end of chapter summary for this one, we didn't pull from anything, right? This is just a placeholder that we created. So if you hit edit on this one, you can immediately start editing it. You do not have to fork it because we didn't copy it from anywhere. So say on this one, you wanna add in an emphasis on something. And then say you also wanna add in a you know end of cap chapter key terms, or you wanna add in an exercise that you want them to do at the end. You can put all this in here and you're good to go. Maybe you want a further reading section. I have a lot of faculty who want a further reading section. And so they just want to do further reading, optional, optional reading. And then they put some links in there for further reading and you hit save. This is how you edit a placeholder page that's empty. So there's nothing in it. So you didn't have to fork anything. Anything that you do will automatically show up here. That is how you can start editing individual chapters. I recommend doing chapter at a time. Now, one of the things we do need to talk about is accessibility and images. Another beautiful thing about the remixer is that it pulls in all the images and all the files with it. So one of the things that I find really lovely is someone else has done a lot of the work for you and you don't have to do it. You don't have to build from scratch. All of these images already have the proper attributions. They probably already have all of the alt text. But say you're like, Rachel, I want a different image though. I don't really like that image. I want a different image. So one of the challenges that I've had, see what it says right here, we don't have access to edit this page because we haven't forked it yet. So just hit cancel, discard changes because we haven't done anything. We hit the fork, we okay to fork. It should say it again. Sometimes it takes a minute. I am not gonna lie to you sometimes, free software, you just have to hit it a couple times. Hit okay. All right, the little fork option will disappear and it'll reload. Now we have access to edit this. And so you're like, Rachel, I'm just not a huge fan of this. I want a different picture in here. You can just copy and paste an image over, but it won't always upload as a file, which means no one else will see it. So right here, this little image option, you can click image. 
say you have a different image that you want to upload. You hit choose the file. Say recently, I just did one with Thinker. Okay, I say you want this image instead. You choose the file. You can add the alt text right in there in here so we don't have to do it at a different date. So we have Thinker statue with sunrays, with sunrays, sunrays, okay? And we hit save image. It'll put that image in here. Now we also have to make sure though when you add an image that you add in alt text and that you add in the proper attribution. So this one came from the Openverse Creative Commons and we can make sure that it has the proper rich text that goes underneath it. And we've added it in, we hit save. Okay, and when we do that, you'll see that it added a file down at the bottom. Okay. Scroll all the way down to the bottom here and you'll see it added the screenshot. It added it in for us and we did it correctly. That means that anyone will be able to view it. So if you ever have a problem with images, that's what your issue is. You might have to upload it as a file. And again, that's why if we can pull from remixed ones from other people, they've already done that work for us. We don't have to do that. So we added that in and we're good to go. Now, accessibility needs to be done on every single page. You can do full accessibility where you ask LibreText to run a bot over it and they will give you the accessibility elements. But you can also just go page by page, this little guy right here in the circle, click on that. I would at the bare minimum do alt text images and head headlines, but you know, you need to do all of them at some point. You hit okay and it's gonna say right here, hey, we need a quick fix. This header is the wrong one. So you hit okay and you can do a quick fix. And often it'll do it for you. Issues and warnings is telling you the paragraphs might not have the right headers. So it'll tell you what you need to do to fix it. If an image has alt text, you can do quick fix and fix that. So this is a way that you can do alt text as well as all your accessibility really easy and just make sure you hit save afterwards. Now, one other reason to use the Remixer tool is I wanna show you the detailed licensing. This as a librarian makes my heart sing. So if you go back to the main page of your book and you go to the back matter, when you pull from the remixer, it saves every single detailed licensing for every single page for you. So we only pulled content into one chapter and look at our detailed licensing already. It's already telling you very specifically where we pulled these things from. It's telling you the licensing on every single page. This would take a librarian forever to do, and it would be almost impossible if we don't know where you originally pulled the sources from. So pulling from remix from the remixer is always great. Now I have had a couple faculty say, well, Rachel, what happens if I wanna pull from a press books that's an OER or someone that's not a Libra text? How do I do that? You're gonna create a placeholder just like you did in the end of chapter discussion. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So say you want to pull in content from press books or from an OER commons and you've double checked the licensing and you've created a placeholder for it and you wanna put it in here. Okay, you have to hit edit and you can copy and paste anything in just like you would anything. You have to make sure that your licensing matches and you are in charge of doing your own attributions. So here's an example of a press book. Okay, this is specifically in critical thinking. And say you found this and you're like, Rachel, I just really like the way that this talks about it. I think this is well done. I like this whole thing on design thinking right here. I wanna add this in, I think it's important. Absolutely, you can use it, especially if it is an OER. Now this right here, it is a CC by license, which means we can combine it with anything. We're good to go. So you can copy and paste this content. Just copy and paste, right? Control C, come over here. Control V, you copy and pasted it in. But you have to do attributions yourself. So attribution. And what's lovely is most OERs, especially like Pressbooks, they've got it right here ready to go for you. You can copy and paste this in. All right, you can talk about how you remixed it. If you did a big remixer, you're going to say the above content was remixed by, put your name, and then put from original source material and put this in. So this is a way that you can make sure that you have everything in here ready to go. But yes, you can copy and paste from anything. You also might come across once in a while, something that's still in workbench like ours. So ours is not in a, a bookshelf. It's not in a campus bookshelf. It's currently in a workbench. So some people have their workbenches live so anyone can see them. I've had faculty call me up and say, hey, Rachel, I wanna use this content. It's really cool. It's under a CC by license but I can't find it in the remixer. That's because they haven't published it yet, technically. So as long as you still give them credit, you can take their unfinished work and copy and paste it in, but you have to make sure you give them credit and make sure the licenses work. If you're ever confused about licenses, feel free to hit us up at the library and we're happy to walk you through that and make sure. Now, once you've copy and pasted the content in, you've got the attribution the way you want it. And yes, an attribution needs to be on every page, not at the end of each chapter, if at all possible. Make sure you hit save. 
when in doubt, save and save some more. And now you have that content that we pulled in from a press books. It's already in here. We've got everything labeled the way it needs to be. It says what the original licensing is. You're good to go on that. So now we can actually copy and paste that in. So that is how you go about editing a chapter in LibreText using the Remixer tool. You forked it if you wanted to fork things to be able to edit content from someone else. You can add things in. If you're using an image, make sure that you are uploading it as a file and adding in alt text. Think about accessibility. You can add in placeholders and you can copy and paste from other OER sources that are not LibreText in order to fill this out. So those are the main things that we covered here. All right, and then we are gonna talk just briefly. I will do a whole entire video on publishing. But when people say, am I ready to publish? Go back through and double check the entire content from start to finish. Just do a skim, basically. Make sure that everything is organized the way you need it, everything you need to teach the class and you've got base grammar in there. You can also copy and paste small uh, chunks of text into say chat GBT and say, hey, please keep my language and the voice, but check it for grammar and it will check your grammar for you. You can make sure that there's attributions on every page. I know sometimes people just wanna do attributions at the end of each chapter, but especially in LibreText, the way that it does it, it would prefer it to be on every page and it's not that hard to do. And then last, make sure you have accessibility standards so that screen readers uh, can get across the content. So those are the main things we're gonna start with today. Happy editing. I know it can be overwhelming. So whenever you feel like you hit a pain point, reach out to the library. We are here to help you. And happy remixing.